All right, welcome to this video on um, programming your TI Inspire. So we're just going to kind of do a brief overview of um, the Inspire um, as well as, and sorry, I'm just going to go back to the home screen there, um, as well as how to program in specifically the program for your um, name. So on the left here, you'll see the keypad, and I'll be using that to navigate around the screen. And on the right, you see that I've taken my um, screen back to the home screen. So on the right, you're going to see kind of the effects of what I'm pressing. On the left here, you'll be able to see the keys as I'm talking about pressing them. So if I go to home, this is kind of the place to um, start out each time. And now an Inspire works a little bit differently in that you're working within like a document. Um, so you can save documents, you can add things to them. Um, there's lots of different uses, and so this is the type of calculator that you're going to need to explore a lot in order to know how it works. So if you notice on your screen, um, you have number two over there, which you can scroll over to, or you can just press number two. Um, but we're going to, oh, sorry, not number two. We're going to go to new documents, number one here. So if I press enter, um, I'm going to get a new document. Now, if this isn't what pops up for you right away, um, realize you can press menu. And what we want to do is add the calculator to the screen. So we can press number one. And we'll have a document that has calculator capabilities. Now, if I wanted to do multiplication or operations, I can use this area, these buttons to do so. But what I'm really interested in is the programming features. So if you have any experience programming, um, it, the programming interface is um, pretty much a basic um, language that you're going to be using. So to find where we're going to program at isn't quite the same as a TI-84, so that's why we have this video. We're going to press Menu, and then we're going to go down to number 9, which says Functions and Programs. And we're going to do the Program Editor here, so we can start a program. And we want to press, so that was number one, and then number one again, new. Now, again, you can scroll and press enter, or you can um, go through things differently. So the name of the program we're going to do, we're going to call this program owner. So I want to make sure everybody calls it owner so that we all know where to look. If you find a TI Inspire, where to look to find their information on, on who owns this. So if you want to do if you notice, you have letters down at the bottom here. If you want to do capitals, you just press the shift key, which is not near the letters, so that's kind of um, not as intuitive. But I'm going to title this capital O W N E R owner. Now the next options here, I want to leave this as a type as a program, and for library access, you're going to press the right arrow key, and you're going to change this to library libpub, if you want to call it that, show in catalog. So what that means is it's going to be in the public library for your, on, your or, sorry, on your calculator, and it'll be available no matter what document a person is in. Um, so you want to make sure that it's not just a part of this document. If you just write a regular program, it'll only be a part of this document. Um, you're going to be opening and creating new documents um, throughout the year, and you want it to be available all the time. So if I scroll down again, I can press enter, and we're okay. So you should have this pop up, and on the right side here, we have this new screen, and um, you can use your scroll pad. Um, it's not as easy to use for me in this demo version. Um, I can use it on the screen here, but you can use the scroll pad to also select and click, um, kind of like on a regular computer. But if you notice on this right side, this is our programming screen, and on the left side is the screen that we were on with the calculator before. So we're going to write our program here by going into the area between, between program and end program. So program says we're starting the program, end program says stop of the program. And what we want to do here, and I'm just going to show you, we can type in commands using the um, alphabet keys there, or we could go into menu, and these are all the different things that you can do in programming. Now, there's lots of options, and we're not going to go into all of them right now, or more than just one. We're going to go to number six, which is in input output, I slash O means input output, and we're going to go to display, so number one. So what we want this program to do is just display 
to the person using it who the calculator belongs to. So DISP is display. Um, and what display does is just puts out information or puts out whatever you ask it to to the calculator screen when the program is run. So we are going to want to display your name. So to do this, the other thing we need to add in if we want a, like, a string of letters here um, is we need to go to this. So it has a question mark, exclamation, exclamation point on it. And what it'll do on your screen is pop up all these different options. To, in order to have it input, output words to the screen, we need to use these quotation marks. So I press enter on it, and now I have quotation marks. And so I'm going to type in now that this, Calculator belongs to, and I'm going to put Miss Morrison, but you need to put your name there. Um, if you have any information, like you want to put your phone number, um, or you could even say, please return to Miss Morrison in room 207, um, I'm going to just say, please return to room. 207. And now I realize your typing isn't going to be as quick because I'm currently using um, a keyboard. So that's kind of a little bit of an unfair advantage. But the space bar here is at the bottom by the Z's. And now if you scroll over, you can see that it already automatically put an end quotation mark for you. So our program is pretty much simple here and is already written. So you can use the left and right scrolls to so you can see the entire program, um, but we're ready to go. All right, so in order to get this program ready to go and saved in the right place, we're going to go to Menu first, and this is what you need to do with every program um, before you use it, is you want to check the syntax and store. So if you press Menu, then Number 2, and then Number 1, and it'll say, you can see over on the screen here, it says it's stored success, and if you scrolled over, it would say successfully. So we want the program to be stored before we actually use it. Um, all right, so what we're going to do now, we need to save this document. So I'm going to press the doc button, and then number one is file, and then we're going to go down to number four, and we're going to save this document. Now, this is very important. And I'm going to scroll up to get into the folders here. It's kind of like on your computer. You need to save this. It has to be saved in the My Library or My Lib folder. So I'm going to press Enter on the folder. And the file name, I'm going to name the same as I did the program. I'm going to put it as Owner. Oh, actually, nope, that's a lie. I want to put, and I'm going to shift. I'm going to put capital A, capital A, and then owner. The reason being is you may end up writing a lot of different programs. And when we look at this list, you already have a, maybe a couple programs in there that are preloaded with a calculator. Um, mine came with some. I'm not sure if yours does. But you don't want this file to get lost in a whole line of programs. Um, we want it to be right up at the very top, and if it's alphabetically listed, which it is, um, if you put AA, that's always going to be at the very top. So once we have that in, you can go scroll down, and you can press Enter, and it's going to tell you that it's saving, and now it's saved. Okay, so now how do we actually um, get anywhere on this and actually view this? Um, first off, I'm going to go into your Docs and File, and then I'm just going to go ahead and close this document just to show you that it's not um, this document that's causing the, the program to be run. Um, so I'm going to scroll over actually first, and I'm going to go to My Documents. And then I'm going to press Menu. And if I scroll all the way down, I just want to refresh the libraries. The libraries are where everything is stored. Refresh it just to make sure that it's up to date with what you just added in. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my home screen, 
and I'm going to start a new document, and I'm going to add the calculator in. And now what you can do as far as getting to that program, anytime you want to access it, you can go to this little book looking button is the catalog. Now you probably, when you first come to the catalog, um, are on number one, but if you press number five, um, you would be in in the actual catalog. So you see up at the top, current problem means the sheet you're on. If you had had any programs in it, we haven't put any programs in it. But if you look at AA owner, that's what we put in earlier. So if I press enter and I press enter again to click on owner, now this is going to call the program that we just did make earlier. So if I press enter, you can see the statement that I want to see. Now, right now we're just working on getting the program in. Um, we'll work on getting a way that um, your program can be saved, but no one can actually access and edit it. Because at this point, um, you could open up that file and access it. So right now we just have the program on here. Um, we'll get into some more advanced things along the way, but that's your basic introduction to how to the structure of how to program the calculator.